Hello everybody and welcome to a brief but not exactly unfact-filled episode of Poddywood. Uh, I am one of your co-hosts, Steve Hester, and joining me as always is... Yo, 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 holla at your boy and sit subscribe before we do anything. Yeah, whatever. Andrew yeah. Roger Carton, how you doing? We, we're too old to be doing that. You know, yeah, smash, the, smash the like button, the smash the subscribe. Who says smash the like button and smash the subscribe button? Who does that? People who need to get smashed in the face. Yeah. Uh, well, what we're doing is we wanted to just do something little and brief, just to kind of bridge the gap between our episodes, and just kind of test the water to see if you guys also like this little short form format um, going forward. But there is a reason behind us actually doing this in the first place, and that is this week spelled the end for the famous Warner Brothers Ranch out there in the wilds of California. Um, now, Andy, you've been there um, with uh, with a very good friend, Mark Marshall. Yes. So what is Warner Ranch? Why should we care that it's been knocked down? Tell us a little bit about it. To go back in time, it didn't start off life as the Warner Brothers Ranch. It started off as Columbia Ranch, which is what a lot of people still call it to this day. And it was... Uh, kind of, it kind of got into a, a co-ownership thing with Warner Brothers. If you've seen the 100 Years of Warner Brothers documentary that came out just recently, uh, they did talk about the partnership between Columbia and Warner Brothers. Uh, in 1990, that ended. Columbia ended up moving away into the um, the old MGM studios, which is still occupied to this day. Was that round uh, about so, when they got bought by Sony? Yes. Round about then? Yeah. Yeah, okay. around time. So... Basically, it then reverted back to Warner Ranch in 1990. You kind of have to go back to the days of black and white. So a lot of the Three Stooges were filmed there. Um, right. One of the greatest Western movies of all time, High Noon, was filmed there. And throughout all of the 60s, everything from I Dream of Genie uh, to Bewitched uh, to the old black and white Batman series back in the day, all of this was filmed at Warner Ranch and the facades they had, obviously their New York Street. Um, from the 80s, you would know it as the Griswold's house from uh, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Yeah, I think. right next door to the Murtoff's house from the Lethal Weapon series. It's hard yes. to believe that they are neighbors. Even to more recent fare, like Young Sheldon was filmed there and One Division as well. Uh, we're all filmed uh, on these sets that have been preserved for was a bit close to 100 years, if not more. Wow. So this is an okay. awful lot of history which is just being flattened to the ground, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, basically, it was all used for outdoor scenes. So all of the... Bill I've actually been in the Griswold's house and I've been in the Murtoff's house because I, I could not help myself. And it was very magical moment kind of being as a, as a kid of the 80s just to kind of step into these buildings. They're all hollow inside. Yeah, but... You know, but it, it's just the facades. And they have changed over the years but you can still tell it as those houses um and you know just a bit up is the house from bewitched and uh, i think they were filming the middle there when i was there this was about 2014 okay. or 15 somewhere around that time yeah i'm, um, not, familiar, I'm not familiar with that one but go on the, the the saddest thing is i saw a video that was posted on facebook by somebody uh, who was they're finishing up their last days and you're just seeing them tear down the Partridge family house that has remained standing there for so long. Okay, so how did you end up going there in the first place? Uh, well, Mark Marshall took me to Warner Brothers Studios in Burbank for the first time. And uh, that was my first time walking around a major studio. So Warner Brothers has been my first ever studio experience. I've been to many more since. Mm -hmm. But that one has always had a place in my heart. Uh, I was walking around there, and I think I shared some pictures on social media that uh, I was at Warner Brothers, and it was just a fantastic place. I've seen all of this history. And Mike Deesa, upcoming guest that you will see next week, uh, messaged or me. Or whenever I get around to editing it. Whenever you get around to editing it. <laughs> so Mike Deesa messages me and says, have you ever been to Warner Ranch? How far is it away, by the way? Well, it's how not far that was far. Away? It's huh? not that far. As it, memory serves me, I would be amazed if we were in the car 10, 15 minutes to get to it. Right. Um, it 
that's as far as I can remember. And I only ever went to Warner Ranch once. Um, but me and Mark went there, and Mark had spent a lot of his time there on Free Willy. Oh, oh. there's the sirens. Willy's escaped yet again. Um, Warner Animation, I remember going in there. You, you walk in there, you've got the, the welcoming red sofas in the in the main lobby room and all the walls are white so the artist can just draw on them they can just go in and just draw on the walls do doodles and cartoons and things like that and i remember i was waiting in the hallway for mike to come off the phone and they had a poster there framed poster of the bugs bunny roadrunner movie yeah we, we went for a tour around the place and you had uh, the amateurville house was there you kind of walk around and obviously that was where the friends fountain was so when you see the opening of Friends, when they're all dancing in the fountain, that is, well, was at Warner Ranch. It has since been relocated to uh, the main Warner Brothers studio in Burbank mm. um, as part of the tour. But that is where it was originally situated, was at Warner Ranch. And, uh, you know, I, I got to sit and take my photograph there. Uh, I get to walk all the facades and everything. And, and see all of these buildings and step inside them and walk back to Warner Animation and there's a, obviously the huge Bugs Bunny that is there that me and Mike got this photograph taken. And behind that is uh, the windows obviously to Warner Animation. And later on that night after posting my picture, uh, a good friend of mine called Jay Oliva messaged me for Hi, the Jay. first time. <laughs> but Jay messaged me for the first time and said, oh my God, you were here at Warner Animation. Why didn't you come in and say hi? And we've been solid friends ever since and worked together. So uh, Warner Brothers Ranch for me holds a lot of special memories in so my career. Why are they even tearing it down? What is the reason behind this? Apart from uh, maybe Zaslav wanting to stretch his elbows out a little bit further. Okay, so Warner Brothers Ranch was sold by Warner Brothers in 2019 and it was to the Worth Real Estate Group. Mm -hmm. which basically tells you what is going to happen here, as well as, as the Stockbridge Real Estate Fund. And it was part of a larger deal, so that this year, uh, apparently it's going to be a bunch of sound stages, which make it even more depressing. Um, yeah. Especially when no movies are currently being made, and yet they're demolishing movie history. I mean, these sets have been around so long and have so much rich history you, you could be here all day reeling off the amount of things that were filmed there well i was i was watching uh lethal weapon recently um and not getting into what happened with mel gibson's meltdown they are still great films um but what is more identifiable than anything else is that house the Murtor house Yes. And it is it is almost a character in and of itself. And like I said, that house has been smashed, <laughs> blown up, and set on fire. Yeah, come on. Come on. <laughs> and it's it's really sad to think of something as iconic as that. He's now just been crumpled and flattened, and in this place is just going to be concrete and big sheds because let's face it that's what a sound stage is it's a big shed also you know it was used for the street scenes for the movie hocus pocus the disney oh, movie right was, was filmed there so it's it's not just warner brothers movies that were filmed there there was a lot of history uh that had gone on it's it's just really sad even stuff like the waltons was filmed there you know, with John Boy that we had in the last episode. With John, yes, John Boy. Yeah, John, John Boy. Boy, yeah. Does your species have kissing? Oh, yes. We have that. LA really doesn't have like a heritage association. They, they don't really kind of protect its history. No. Um, and, no. and it is really sad. The, the only time I felt kind of on a par of sadness was when Kate Mantellini's shut down. And uh, I was happy that I got to go there a number of times on my first couple of trips to LA. Now this is the restaurant from Heat where Al Pacino and Robert ah, De Niro right. have a diner scene and I have sat at that table in the Al Pacino seat and wow. uh, yeah Cause Cause I I heard heard so you're basically replacing something that is for lack of a better word authentic you know and physical hmm just to probably assemble the same thing in a soundstage. There's going to be a shed somewhere with just the volume, isn't there? 
Yeah, I think the worst thing that can CG. happen is it's just going to be sound stages full of like green screen stuff. Yeah. I think that's the the ultimate insult to this business. And I, I'm very I'm very passionate about it because for me it's you kind of go to these places and you never in a million years think that it won't be there the next time you go. And I've got a lot of warm memories of Warner Animation and, and the people that I've met there have become lifelong friends. But the one thing that really punishes me is that I wish I would have took video when I went around that block. Yeah. Because there are so many like corners of that lot that holds so much history and surprises. And now it's just gone. And I, I feel sorry for people coming into the film industry that are never going to get a chance to experience that. Well, I'm quite jealous of you actually being there, um, having experienced it, having seen it all. And like you say, it's very sad that it's going. Um, you, you said about Hollywood not really taking care of things like this, which is true to a certain point because it, the movie industry like any other kind of big industry is always moving forward uh the only thing that i can think of that would come close would be somewhere like las vegas where they will just bulldoze yeah. down an iconic casino to make way for a new one like the sands or the mirage they've all gone and replaced with new ones i only hope that what is going to come out in the future is going to be something which would have as long lasting a legacy part of me doubts it because we just live in a world now where everything is just so disposable and the 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 ease of which things can be replicated in a computer probably would make uh, all these sets completely obsolete who knows though there might be some kind of big push towards the reality of the thing in the future and they might end up building a new one out in the desert somewhere. I mean, there is a lot of desert in California. There's lots of places yeah. where you could build another one. For those of you uh, who do make it out to Los Angeles and want to experience uh, the last bit of history from it, uh, you can go on the Warner Brothers tour and go to the Friends Fountain, which is now located there. It was transported out uh, just to fully go on the, the tour and you can go and have your picture taken there. Tell them Bab sent you. Yeah. But yeah, um, end of an era. Yeah. Uh, for the uh, Warner Brothers Ranch. Well, it's, it's a little bit of a a little bit of a sad one to kick off these little short form ones, but um, it is something which did need to be discussed because it is a big part of the movie making industry it's it's a big iconic piece of uh of of hollywood's history and there's now just it's gone gone in the name of progress so uh well, so they take paradise they put up a parking lot my friend yeah we can celebrate a bit of warner ranch on our next episode hmm. because uh mike disa will be joining us uh, on our Patreon, you can listen to the full versions of his interviews, and, and trust me, he uh, he tells some fantastic stories that I'm waiting to see if they're going to get us in trouble yet. Uh, for now, though, uh, it has been a goodbye from me. And it's a goodbye from me and Warner Ranch. And we will see you next time. Bye!